Um, thanks everyone for coming along and thank you if you've been to some of our talks before for, for, for coming back um, and for coming along to our Destination Lancaster webinar. Um, for the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to give you a bit more information about Lancaster City as a pl place and the location around. In the welcome talk on Monday, we did talk very, very briefly about the city of Lancaster and its surroundings, um, but we've got some more information for you and, and really some more time for you to ask questions about what it's like to, um, to live here um, as a student. Um, my name is Johnny and I'm a student recruitment assistant and a, a graduate of Lancaster. I also did an MA in history as well um, at the university. Um, I've also got with me a, a small panel of, of experts um, to offer their assistance. Um, I'll start with Joe. Joe, do you want to say a quick hello just before we get going? Hi everyone. Uh, so I'm Joe. I work with Johnny as a in the student recruitment office. Um, I'm also a university graduate, and I've worked at a couple of universities uh, in the UK. So I'll be here uh, in the chat if you have any questions. Um, I'll be happy to answer you as best I can. Have a good session. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Yong Xuan, over over to you. Do you want to uh, give a quick introduction? Okay. Hi there, my name is Yong uh, Xuan and I am the postgraduate student ambassador here. And uh, I also major in the business analytics. And if there is any problem, I will be very happy to help. And Dan, over to you. Hi, I'm Dan. I studied um, undergrad criminology at Lancaster and I'm now doing my postgrad in criminology and social research methods, uh, MSc. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Brill. OK, well, we'll get started um, with the presentation. So if, again, if you've been to some talks before, you will have seen a map of Lancaster and whereabouts um, we are in the United Kingdom. Um, Lancaster is, is in the north of the UK um, and we are, we're a campus based university, which is something which makes us um, quite unique. There is only a handful of universities um, up and down the country, actually, which have a collegiate system. Um, you might have already posted in the chat at some of our previous events, but it'd be again really, really good to know where everyone is joining us from um, this morning, just so we can get a picture of, of where our audience is, um, is, is coming in from. Um, in terms of where Lancaster is, we're, we're really in a, in a very unique position and we're surrounded by a beautiful landscape um, of countryside, the Lake District to the north and um, and uh, the, the Yorkshire Dales over towards the east, um, but as well as the city of Lancaster uh, being a vibrant um, student city, we're not far away from other buzzing metropolitan areas such as Manchester, um, Liverpool and even getting up to Scotland and, and Glasgow. And we're also really well connected to do some travelling. I know everyone's having to stay a little bit close to home at the moment um, due to Covid, um, but um, fingers crossed and looking towards um, the back end of this year or even the summer, we might be able to start doing a bit more travelling again. And when you can do that in Lancaster, we're very, very close to Manchester Airport. It's only about, I think it's over an hour on the on the train. And uh, we're right on the M6 as well, so you can um, get up and down um, the UK very, very quickly if you'd like to. Um, just to give you an idea of what we're going to talk about, um, initially we're going to uh, give you a welcome to Lancaster and look at some pictures, because I know everyone likes looking at pretty pictures um, on slideshows. Um, but really the whole the whole point of, of those pictures is to allow you to kind of imagine Lancaster as a place when you can't visit it at the moment. I think um, something that is um, uh, particularly great about Lancaster is its location, which is incredibly hard to describe at the moment if you can't actually come and visit us. Um, so we've got some pictures just to try and set the scene for you. Now we'll then look at a brief history and because I'm a, um, a history graduate, um, this will be my favourite part of the presentation and I'll try and avoid going into um, going off on too much of a historical tangent for you. Um, we'll then look at the, the culture and arts of, of the city and then I'll hand over to Joe just to talk about the unique region of the country that we live in. And then lastly, we'll look at a week in the life of a student um, just to give you a general idea of what kind of activities take place in the city of Lancaster and um, in the surrounding area and the kind of things that you can get up to. So the first thing I wanted to do is just to put a map of Lancaster up on the slides again, just so you can you can visualise 
um, the city itself. Uh, Lancaster is a medium-sized city. Where you might have heard me say before, we're never going to uh, pretend to be to London. Um, not many cities can be. Um, and we're not going to pretend to be a massive city like Manchester or Liverpool. Um, but that certainly doesn't mean that we don't have um, lots of activity taking place within the city centre itself. The city has some really interesting areas to explore in um, and actually quite a large amount of green spaces uh, which you can see um, on the slide there and particularly at the moment during during lockdown and when everyone's had to stay very very locally I think having all of these different routes and these paths that you can walk along is incredibly handy and you'll hear some some of, of these names mentioned as we go through the slides um, but the main kind of parts of the city which um, everyone tends to wander through would be Williamson Park, which is up on the top here. I think you can see my mouse on the screen. So that's a lookout point over the city towards the Lake District. Um, that's a really nice area to walk around. Then the city centres down towards here and um, really moving up towards the middle, the middle left part of, of the picture. And then you have the castle, which is a, a very big landmark in, in the city centre as well. And all the shopping area and the bars and the coffee shops are in this part of the city. Um, the actual university itself, you can't see it on the map, but it's uh, it's only a, a 50 minute walk, I think, from the city centre itself to get out there, and about a 15 minute um, bus journey. But I'll go on to the history in a second, but if you um, just to give a kind of hint uh, at Lancaster's historical background, um, you can see the map there. Um, you know, Lancaster as a place in, in English history um, it is, is very, very important as a strategic city and um, as a cultural centre for the northwest of, of, of England. Um, but I'll tell you more about that very, very shortly. Without a doubt, I think one of the, the biggest and most impressive landmarks, um, as well as the Ashton Memorial up in Williamson Park, is, is the castle itself. And um, I think, um, again, as a history student, someone who's definitely um, done a bit of travel, I've done a bit of traveling around the UK, um, and um, um, definitely tell them a history person, seen all the castles that we have. Um, Lancaster Castle is, is very, very impressive. and you can go inside it they have craft shops in there and they have a coffee shop um, where you can go inside do some work do some research we've also just opened up brand new study spaces um university owned study space in the castle as well which when we do come out of lockdown um we'll be able to make make the most of um but the castle is really great to walk around in take your lunch up there i did a lot of my my revision actually around the castle and in the grounds um surrounding it it's quite a nice place to um to relax the ashton memorial which i mentioned before that's on the the top right hand corner of the screen it's uh, typically the part of Lancaster which uh, covers everyone's Instagram stories, Facebook pictures because it looks so pretty in the, the summer and the winter and the autumn. Uh, particularly the park looks amazing when all of the autumnal colours um, come out. Um, people go sledging in the winter, there's a coffee shop, there's also a butterfly house um, behind the park and um, it, it's hard to really describe just how um, beautiful the view is over to the Lake District in the summer, particularly when we get um, the sunsets coming in. Um, when you see the Lake District silhouetted in the background, it, it is generally really, really stunning. Um, other parts of the city, um, we do have uh, two uh, two main squares, um, including Dalton Square and Museum Square. Uh, Dalton Square is the top left there. You can see the uh, the statue of Queen Victoria. Uh, we have our twice weekly farmers market, which takes place there with um, craft stalls, um, vintage vinyl, um, clothes, vintage clothing, um, pancakes, uh, Mediterranean food, and really you name it. It's a, it's a great place just to get some lunch and and, and chill out. And then likewise, um, Museum Square, um, which has the museum on it, is another place where everyone tends to meet up and sit outside. Um, and then the picture on, on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, that's inside Williamson Park, which is, is great to wander around in. I've been in Lancaster now for, I think about, um, I have to think maybe four, four or five years, now longer, five, six years, which is, ter which is terrifying, time goes by. Um, but I'm always finding new places in Williamson Park just to, to have, a, have a look around. 
The actual architecture in the city as well um, is is really interesting to walk around uh, a real mixture of old and new um, going you know back about 200 300 years sometimes 400 years old at least um, if you're if you're if you're, you like your pubs and and going out um, Lancaster has some fantastic um, pubs that you can go and have a drink in uh, we also have some really really nice bars as well but um, our coffee shops are definitely our strong point. We do have a really good number of independent shops, um, not just the big high street brands. Um, and you can get um, a coffee and cake and do some do some reading there or some people watching uh, too. We are quite a, um, a waterborne city as well. We do have the River Loon, which goes through the bottom of town, um, which you can walk alongside. And you can see on, on the picture on the bottom right hand of the screen, um, the picture of the river looking back towards the castle um, and the priory um, but we also have the canal and um, I, I think having the canal in the city centre gives you access to go out into the countryside very very quickly um, and um, go outside the city and th the paths are very very clear and it and obviously by the nature of them being canals they're very very accessible um, and you can go quite far and explore quite far away from the city. We do have um, some bars and pubs along the canal as well including uh, the Water Witch and, and the White Cross which run um, pub quizzes, open mic, live music nights, um, they do great food, great fish and chips um, which is making me nostalgic already and in the summer again when the, then the warmer nights come in um, you can have a, a really, really nice time sitting out by the canal and um, and uh, watching the world go by. So, as I've already said, like Lancaster as a as a place is really um, uh, is seeped in history, and uh, the castle itself is is definitely the the, the talking point uh, for historians. Um, the castle, its origins go back um, almost a, a thousand years. Um, and the centre of the castle, which you can see, and the, the, the top of the picture or the keep of the castle is the is the oldest part. Um, the name of Lancaster actually de derives itself from the castle, um, which is uh, Lancaster or R Roman fort on, on the River Loon. And um, it has been described as one of the, the Northwest's important historic and archaeological monuments. Um, but I would go further to say that this is a, um, a location of, of international importance um, and also for, for the country as well. Lancaster also has a very, very close connection to um, one of the, the most iconic rivalries in, in British history, um, which is the, the Wars of the Roses, which were a series of, um, a series of uh, famous and bloody civil wars which took place between the houses of York and Lancaster, which lasted from 1455 to 1485. And, um, uh, if, if you if you don't already know, um, each of, of those houses has a colour and a rose. Um, for for the uh, for the, the Lancastrians, it is the red rose, and it is the white rose for the for the Yorkists. And we do keep up the tradition, um, although a lot more peacefully than it used to happen um, during the 15th um, century. Uh, we still have our roses sports competition against York University every year, which is our mini Olympics, which takes place. Um, if anyone is interested in getting involved in sports during their postgraduate study. Um, I'd recommend um, checking that out as well. And a couple of did you knows as well, and I think this is probably my favourite fact about Lancaster. Um, so Richard Owen, who was um, a, born in Lancaster in 1804, actually invented the term dinosaur, which I think is pretty cool, actually, um, and also founded the Natural History Museum in, in London, which is, is, a, is a pretty it's a pretty big deal. Um, so he was definitely one of the um, the bigger thinkers of the of the 1800s. Certainly, up there with um, with Charles uh, uh, Charles Darwin, whom I'm I'm quite confident he didn't necessarily get along with um, very well. Um, but he was um, uh, the first president of the Microscopical uh, Scopical Society of London in 1839 as well. So he was um, very well involved in um, the, the world of science in in England at the time. This is quite a dark part of, of Lancaster's past um, and 
Lancaster was home to the Pendle Witch Trials in 1612, um, a real time in, in England um, where everyone was um, suspicious of witch, uh, witchcraft and mysterious goings on. Um, and the trial of the Pendle Witches um, are certainly some of the most famous recorded in English history. Um, and um, there were 12 accused who live in the local area and were charged with the murder of 10 people by the use of, of witchcraft. Um, all but two were actually tried at the Lancaster um, courts, along with the, um, I, I was going to pronounce the word there, but I think I need to do my research on that one. Um, so I'm going to say the Salisbury witches, which I might have um, uh, ruined there, in a series that have become known as the, Lanc the Lancashire Witch Trials. The, the courtroom in the castle at Lancaster um, is, is one of the oldest functioning courtrooms in, in the UK, which you can actually visit. And, um, and when you go in there, it, it is a very interesting atmosphere and you certainly do get in, in a, an impression of how much has taken place inside the castle. Um, and actually, it's quite a rare opportunity to be able to go inside a courtroom so freely. Um, as well as go around the castle itself um, and have a bit of an explore. So we'll move now on to culture and arts um, in, in the city centre and um, we are certainly a city full of entertainers, not just from our students who bring so much to the local area, but also from a whole host of very well established artists and um, musicians, painters, um, craft crafters who have been in the northwest of England, um, you know, all their life, uh, not just students who've arrived um, to come to university. If you're interested in your theatre, as well as our, our fantastic um, the performing arts department at the university, um, we do have the Grand Theatre, the Duke's Theatre, which is, they're both independent theatres, and um, the Duke's Theatre has a cinema as well. Um, we do have the Town Hall, which is used as a gig venue um, and attracts up and coming artists to tour around the United Kingdom. Uh, we have the Nuffield Theatre and Cinema on campus, which is actually subsidised for students, so it's that bit cheaper. And we do have an outdoor theatre in Williamson Park, which is, is really, really cool. Um, they actually perform parts of plays in different locations in the park. So you really move with the cast as they go around and they, they in normal circumstances, would do a performance um, every single year as well. We have many festivals from music festivals to food festivals to arts festivals taking place for music festivals. Uh, the biggest one that now happens is called Highest Point Festival. Um, and that festival is the one that you can see on the right hand side with uh, the Ashton Memorial and um, the park really comes alive. There's a very big stage. It's it's a, it's a mini Glastonbury uh, really. Um, and they do get some really, really uh, big and up and coming acts coming there. Uh, we have the Lancaster Jazz Festival and the Lancaster Music Festival, which is a little bit more local based. Um, and then the Morecambe Fringe Festival as well. Uh, Morecambe is only just down the road and is a, 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 a fantastic little seaside um, town to walk along the promenade, get some fish and chips, get some ice cream um, and, um, and go for a, a, get some fresh sea air. Another festival that takes place um, across the year is Light Up Lancaster, uh, which is a two day festival of light art and fireworks. Uh, the city really just come to life. The streets are absolutely packed. There's there's yeah, again, there's music, there's there's food um, available as well. Um, when it last happened a couple of years back now, they had one installation where they had a um, a scale model um, of the moon inside Lancaster Priory, which you can see on the left hand side of the screen. And they played um, some really iconic albums, um, including Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon in its entirety. Um, and it was really it was really cool to be able to listen to that and see that um, taking place. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, one of the things that uh, um, has happened in the city centre. We've also had the, the Keep a Light on Festival. So, um, this is an example just to show how even during um, during COVID and during lockdown, um, the the artist uh, community in Lancaster still remained very, very active. Um, as as they can see on the slide, they, uh, residents and businesses showed how they would um, stay positive and um, keep a light on until we can all come back together again and really, really enjoy um, live events. 
the on the uh, open mic nights and live music performances in the city have um, some of them have also moved online as well some of the pubs and venues which would have done weekly events are now live streaming um, gigs and um, another event that I, I, I helped out with was the uh, electronic music open mic night um, and they've moved all their performances online so we've definitely adapted. We do also have Lancaster on Ice, which comes around, um, which is great fun. Um, if you're absolutely useless on a pair of, of ice skates like me, it basically means that you're falling over for about two hours. Um, um, but um, it's, it's, it's a good it's good fun. It feels really Christmassy um, and it's a really festive time um, of the year. If you're interested in, in art and um, looking at museums, and um, there was actually a, a survey that was done um, which said um, what are the you know what makes a city great and what makes a city a place to be well they said actually having plenty of culture having art galleries and having museums was a huge part of, of a city's cultural identity and um, we have um, plenty of them in Lancaster as well including the Townhouse Gallery the Crescent Gallery in Morecambe and we have some nice independent craft shops such as Arteria which are nice to get some gifts um, we do have our museums such as the City Museum the Maritime Museum and as well as having uh, the castle, which dates back a thousand years, we do have a Roman, uh, our Roman heritage in, in Lancaster and um, the ruins of a Roman bathhouse. There are many notable sacred sites in the in the, in the northwest in general, and um, some of them are in Lancaster, including the Lancaster Cathedral, the Priory and Parish Church. On campus, on campus, <laughs> there's my voice going there. Um, we do have our multi-faith chaplaincy, um, which you are more than welcome to visit, even if you're of no faith. Um, it's a very relaxing environment. The um, the chaplains and the staff in there are very open, very friendly, um, and they do host meditation sessions, which you can go and visit. We do have the Islamic Community Centre of Lancaster and the Temple uh, Bethel as well. And nearby um, in, in, the, in the region, we have Furness Abbey, um, uh, St Anne's Heritage Mural, and also the Buddhist Temple for World Peace in the Lake District. OK, so now that I've said a little bit about our arts, our culture and, and Lancaster as a place, um, I'm going to pass you over to Joe now just to talk about um, the region in a little bit more detail. Thank you, Johnny. Um, OK, so uh, we thought it might be interesting for you to think about sort of uh, where we are at Lancaster and and how easy it is to get to a lot of other really exciting places. Um, you you may know the area, you may not. Um, you may know England, you may not. Um, I think we've got some people um, asking questions about um, international students, so you, you might not know this area at all. And we thought what would be quite interesting for you was to know where you could go in 60 minutes. A lot of people are used to traveling that sort of time for their commute or for an activity that they want to do at the weekend. So we thought, well, if you had your weekend, where might you be able to get to in 60 minutes from Lancaster? So as you can see here, we've, we've got Blackpool, which um, I'll talk to you a little bit more about Blackpool in just a moment. That's going to take you under 40 minutes. If you want to go to um, slightly larger cities, cities you might have heard of if you're coming from abroad, um, like Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds and even York. Um, for the for the last three, it's just over 60 minutes. But um, for Manchester, it's a 60 minute train ride for you. And that's sort of um, direct train from from Lancaster to Manchester. Very easy. Um, if you want to go to the lake, so the sort of the heart of the Lake District, that's going to take you about 45 minutes and uh, and to the Dales, uh, which is another beautiful place for you to um, explore in nature. That's um, just over half an hour. So uh, let's talk about some of these places in a little bit more detail. Um, I'll, next slide, please, Johnny. It's taking its time. I have done it. Oh. I promise. <laughs> no. OK, nice. Um, OK, so uh, what we really like about living in the northwest, about living in, in Lancaster, is that you can really create this unique activity calendar for yourself. Um, and when we say unique, it's it's really going to um, be populated with all kinds of interesting fun stuff for you to do throughout the year. So as I said, it's only going to take you about 30 to 40 minutes to 
get to Blackpool, um, and you may already know Blackpool um, by reputation, but this is just a really fun city to go and visit. Um, there's the Blackpool Tower, there's the Promenade, and there's lots of different entertainment going on there, some that is kind of nationally famous. Um, you've got various shows there. You've got art galleries in Lancaster, as, as uh, Johnny mentioned, but also you've got those sort of bigger art galleries in the cities nearby, like Manchester. You've got galleries up in the Lake District as well. You've got museums there too. Um, so the this is the sort of place, obviously, you can visit all year round. You're probably more likely to spend more time indoors at such places during the winter. Um, and then speaking of the winter, the Christmas market at Manchester is somewhere. So I'm I'm not from the northwest. I'm from the Midlands of the UK. But we used to travel up to um, the Christmas market in Manchester just because it's it's really great. It's one of the best that we have in the country, and uh, and so that's that's somewhere you've got to get in your calendar um, while you're here studying. There's a uh, there's pride parades and, and and similar events happening in in lots of cities across the UK. But there's a particularly big one. Um, in Manchester that wouldn't take you very long to get to from Lancaster and uh, and then if you if you are interested in in concerts we have I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about um, a couple of festivals up in the lakes but um, obviously Manchester and Liverpool and Leeds these big cities um, nearby they will also have um, music concerts and festivals for you to visit outside of that that's available for you in Lancaster city itself. OK, and so we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking to you about the Lake District National Park um, with the with the closest university you're going to get to um, to this beautiful area of the country. We are really lucky to um, have Dan with us today. Dan, I'm going to ask you to talk to us about the Lake District because I believe you know quite a lot about it. Try my best anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, where would you like me to start? So, um, have you visited the Lake District? <laughs> I have indeed. So, I live near Coniston, so it's terrible looking, but I can't tell which lake's there a pitch, but I don't think Coniston's one of them. Um, but Coniston is one of the many lakes, or some of them aren't lakes, but don't get me started on that. Um, many of the lakes you'll find in the Lake District, which is where, of course, it gets its name from. It's not just lakes. Um, as it says on the slide, it is our largest national park and a World Heritage Site. That's more of a recent thing, um, which is obviously that's for a reason. It's stunning. So I think one of the big features is mountains, especially during lockdown, as everyone's found that there's loads of places to go and visit um, in their local area. They've everyone's developed quite a love of, of hill walking and exploring and the Lake District once it opens back up is a great place to do that. So you've got places like um, England's tallest mountain, Scarfell Pike, which um, I was up fairly recently. I think it was probably a few months ago now um, with my friend and, you know, it's perfectly achievable. Make sure you're all safe and stuff, but there's so many things like that to do. And if you want something a little bit more tame, the Lake District offers that as well. So you'll see in the picture on the left, there's a load of boats and things. There are plenty of places in the Lake District where you can go out for a day. You can hire a little um, boat and go on a bit of an adventure. Um, I don't really know where to go from here, to be honest, but. Um, no, that's brilliant, Dan. I was wondering, um, as a student, did you find um, that you had time to explore the, the local area? Did you find that it was, uh, how, how did it sort of relate to your studies? Did it help with the studies? Uh, what, what was your, what, how did you make use of the area while you were a student? Yeah, so I think it definitely did. So um, me and my friends, um, now and again, we after a lecture or something when we had a bit of spare time. So maybe on a Wednesday afternoon, which um, as you may know, is often dedicated to doing extra extracurricular activities. We used to go to the Lake District, uh, hire out a couple of kayaks and go for a kayak on the lake. Uh, and just it was a great way to relax and just wind down and spend a bit of time together and doing something a little bit different. Um, and I think you really do have that flexibility if you want. Um, another thing about um, places around um, Lancaster, including the lakes, is that it's quite rural and as such there's quite a lot of things like campsites and little holiday homes and things you can go to for a night or two if you do want to get away from uh, from Lancaster. 
uh, for a little bit and explore um, explore around. Um, and I think all these places are definitely definitely worth visiting, definitely worth um, thinking about going to. Um, obviously, as well, you might be interested in some of the more historical aspects of the Lake District, particularly the impact it's had on things like literature. So, um, Swallows and Amazons is an obvious example, um, and all of that is right there on the on the doorstep of Lancaster. And as as has been mentioned, it's so easy to get to. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Dan. Um, you make it sound really exciting. And I have to say that when you are a student and, and as you said there, and you can sort of be inspired by your surroundings as well, and it gives you that like refresh of energy uh, for your studies, that's that's really cool. Um, so Johnny, I'm going to ask you to move on the slide to the next one. Um, we just we just have a few more things to say about the surrounding area now. Um, if you are really into your sports, there are some unique opportunities up in the northwest that people will travel for. So as I've already said, I will travel for some mulled wine in a Christmas market, but some people will travel because they love the idea of running up and down these mountains. So we have the Bob race, which is um, it's a 24 hour race, um, although I think you've, you've got as much time as you need to complete it. And, uh, and you're basically running up and down these peaks and so people People love that challenge um, and then the thread is similar but it's um, it's you're on a bike and then you have this um, Grassmere sports um, sort of uh, adventure festival that happens and this is actually this is a hundreds of years old sporting event in fact it's only been um, it's only not run during the pandemic and then during the first and second world war um, it, it has all kinds of events like um, wrestling, fell running, um, hound trails, flat races and uh, and it's a, it's a couple of days event and again it's the sort of thing where you don't necessarily have to be the one participating in the sport yourself maybe you go along just for the atmosphere you're going along to sort of cheer on friends and family but um, again it's this uh, this real pinnacle of, um, of a unique sport event and people come from all around the country and all around Europe in fact to take part. I think we have the next slide Johnny. Seamless transitions here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's that's teams for you. But um, yep. Yeah. And just the final thing to say as well um, about this sort of um, endless opportunities, the wide open space, the the, the rural space that um, Dan and Johnny have both talked about. Um, you might be into things like um, outdoor swimming. Uh, I've, I've heard this is really very good for you and one day I'm going to try it myself. Um, but um, also you've got uh, the racing events. Uh, Kendall Calling is a music and arts festival um, and that's um, I think it's a four day event and that's, that's another thing worth checking out in the local area. I mean to be in such a beautiful place of beauty like the Lake District but then to add to that music and arts I mean I just I think it's probably um, it's it's worth competing with the rest of the world and what, what they have to offer for sure. Um, so lots of leisure activities for you to get involved in um, to help recharge you and refresh you for your studies. And I think that's basically we're, we're almost at the end of talking about um, the sort of surrounding area and what you can get up to. And it's just it's worth keeping in mind that whether you are kind of an outdoor enthusiast or cities are more your things, um, you kind of want to engage with the uh, entrepreneurs or, or maybe you want to just get to know different types of, of people. So lecturers, students, farmers, we are a region of really approachable and friendly people and that is one comment that uh, you may get from people who are native to the UK but they're not native to this area is just how remarkably friendly the people are and uh, and I can definitely attest to that myself. Um, so I am going to pass back to Johnny now um, to kind of uh, think we've got one last section to talk to you about. Thank you very much. Great, thanks John. Thanks Dan for um, giving us the loads out on the Lake District and the local area. I'm incredibly jealous that you live near Coniston. It's a, it's a nice part to, of the lakes to be. 
Um, so we're going to talk through a week in the life of a student now and um, as we're going through this I just want you to bear in mind that this is not set in stone we're not saying that this is if you come to Lancaster you have to do this on these days um, this is just a general idea just to give you an idea of what's on offer so if you're a foodie and you like eating out and you like trying something a little bit different as well as sticking with the favorites um there are some really cool places you can go to eat out um actually dan yongshuan have you been to go burrito <laughs> who hasn't been to go burrito I think. Yeah, correct I correct answer <laughs> we always used it as a great spot after a climbing session in the lakes funnily enough we went back and got a go burrito Exactly. Uh, young Sean, how about you? What do you think of Go Burrito? Oh, I don't really know about this because... You don't, you know, know, you don't know about Go Burrito? What? <laughs> yeah, I really need someone to introduce me. So, yeah, I would explore it in the future, definitely. Sounds great. Well, I think that's the first thing you're going to have to do once everything opens up. <laughs> they, they have this challenge in Go Burrito, which is called Sink the Titanic. And um, it's a huge burrito, which um, if you can finish it, you, um, you you don't pay for it and you get a prize at the end. Um, but I think like only two people have, have actually done that. It is a, an incredibly hard challenge. Um, so you can do that, although may, maybe don't do that exact thing on a regular basis. Um, but we do have... Um, the bars and um, like the study rooms, which is quite popular with, with students. Um, the water, which as well as I've said, is a nice place to sit out. Um, we do have just a, a really good mix and variety of um, food that you can that you can go and enjoy. Um, and also pub quizzes as well and weekly quizzes. Um, the one at the White Cross um, is probably one of the best in, in Lancaster. Um, so once you've, you've done that, this is gonna be an expensive week already. Um, on Tuesdays, um, this is all about going out and having a coffee and um, the quote you can see on the screen, which is from um, a mysterious person. Um, it's, um, you know, Lancaster really is a coffee lover's paradise and you couldn't, um, you know, um, ask, ask for more really. Um, there's anything from quirky coffee shops to more affordable ones, to vintage ones, to your big chain ones. Um, really but some of the best names would be Atkinson's which is a, a very well established local business um, Journey Social Brew and the, and the Quarter House um, which are all, all nice places um, to check out if you haven't already um, gathered already we are an incredibly cultured city um, but just to um, really make, make the point one more time you know you can wander around the castle the market is well worth checking out and also the theatre um, to the um, our students on campus get quite involved with the Duke's Theatre. Um, and actually, one of Lancaster University's alumni is um, Andy Serkis, who is the actor who played Gollum in Lord of the Rings, um, who very much founded or uh, mastered a lot of the early motion capture um, imaging in, in cinema. He's a graduate of Lancaster and he learned a lot of his craft in the Duke's Theatre, which is quite cool. Um, on Wednesdays we jam and um, again from a familiar um, quote on the screen there from a mysterious person, um, as someone who as I've said got really involved in live music in Lancaster there really is so much on offer. Um, I arrived in my first year at, at uni, uni and was so um, um, surprised by the, the sheer amount of activity taking place in, uh, in the city. Um, every single pub has music um, playing out from it. If you stand in, in uh, Museum Square in the city centre, you can hear music just coming from all directions. And um, for me, actually, that was something that I really liked about. If I, if I went home for Christmas and I came back and was going through the city centre, that just made me feel so much at home. And um, when I actually, before I came back to do the role I'm doing now, I lived in the northeast of England for a year again. And again, that first night back walking through the, ta uh, the, the city centre, I was like, you know, this is a nice place to be. Um, but anyway, enough of my own personal anecdotes. Um, the Golden Lion is the home of our Funk Club, um, which is a lot of fun. Um, the, uh, the people who organise that are a, a real, uh, you know, have a real good time. Um, uh, Cantina is our probably our biggest music venue that we have in Lancaster um, and has um, DJ events, electronic music to um, again funk, soul, R&B, you name it really. Um, the John Agorn is 
the um, the the iconic um, venue really for open mic nights, and the pub and the bobbin is our rock and metal venues, which uh, and specifically the bobbin has a very very good um, reputation for attracting up and coming bands. So uh, we do also have the Lancaster Brewery, and we do have breweries actually two breweries within the city centre itself, uh, Lancaster Brewery and Accidental Brewery, which are um, uh, very nice places to go and have a drink. Um, on Thursdays we climb, so really as, um, as, as Joe said and as Dan said, um, we do have the, the luxury of being in an area which is so um, full of opportunities to do these outdoor pursuits, um, which you know by all means please do as much as you can whilst you're here. I think students when they do come here, um, you know I, I think the main um, uh, words of hindsight that we get from students is I wish I'd just gone out and explored the region a little bit more um, so please do um, if, when you come. Um, and on Fridays we party and you know I think being a postgraduate student um, and having been a postgraduate student myself um, it doesn't mean that as soon as you become a postgraduate student you don't have a good time like that's not true whatsoever um, you know you can still have a really good time go out uh, meet up with people obviously in the normal circumstances it's been difficult this year um, but we you know Lancaster again for a city which is not as big as Manchester not as big as London has uh, loads of activity taking place in the city it's a very safe place it's going a night out as well I've I've never been out in Lancaster and felt um, at risk um, or you know I've, so it's, it's a good place to be and we do have the Sugar House which is a student union run a nightclub and we have had some um, really good um, big names in electronic music come along um, as well and uh, once you've got through this week which is pretty action-packed as you can see um, you can relax uh, go up to Williamson Park as we've said um, and um, you can go up to the top of the Ashton Memorial which is as the court says the fancy building on the top of the hill you can see from anywhere in the city um, and the view actually you can see there is uh, you can see on the top uh, picture looking over towards the Lake District on a clear day it, it really is um, is jaw-dropping and then on Sundays uh, we walk along the canal and eat ice cream um, at the canals really do open the city up and um, if you do fancy a little bit of a journey outside of Lancaster we do have Wallings um, ice cream and dairy I only discovered this place when I was in my masters um, and actually it was it was a really good day out we just finished all of our coursework deadlines um, at, just before Christmas and we decided you know what we're going to go to Wallings which is about a 10 minute drive down away from the uni um, uh, south and uh, we had um, so much ice cream that I, I definitely felt ill afterwards but it was great um, and then we went to a we went to a petting zoo <laughs> which was really good fun so you know there's a lot of master's students and, and PhD students filling up on ice cream and pancakes and then going to see some reindeer you know what, what more what more can you ask um, so I definitely recommend checking out Wallings um, when you get the time okay so um, we've we've got through all of all the slides there and I do appreciate there was a lot of information to take in and I can see we've had some questions and some really nice comments as well in the chat which is which is great to see and some people really looking forward to coming to Lancaster um, if you want to check out a copy of the prospectus you can do so online and I'd really recommend that you have a look um, this session as, a, as you're probably well aware is all part of our postgraduate open week um, for sessions that have passed there will be recordings and for sessions that are coming up please do uh, come along and sign up to them uh, today we will have our writing and research proposal session taking place as well as our careers and postgraduate admissions application sessions so go to the website um, to register for them and please do come along there if you'd like to chat anyone after this event, you can do it on our website and on the student room as well. Um, but we've got uh, just over 10 minutes left, so I think the best thing to do is to open up to any questions. Um, and actually, just before we do, um, I think um, I'm, I'm going to put the pressure on our ambassadors again. Uh, Dan, is there anything that I've, I've missed off? Um, is there any location in Lancaster you're thinking, why isn't that there or would you mention anything else? You know what? I think that covered everything really well. I genuinely cannot think of anything else. In fact, there are things on there that I wouldn't have even thought of in the first place. Um, though I do disagree with the quote about Wallings. I think it's probably the best ice cream in the country, rather than just, <laughs> just in Lancaster. But yeah, genuinely, I'd, out of all the places, I'd definitely recommend the Lake District. 
um, as as one of the places to visit whilst you're here. It's just it is genuinely incredible. It feels like a different world. Yeah, um, uh, Yongshuan, how about you? Um, what's your favourite place in Lancaster? Well, my favorite, uh, favorite place is the city centre, actually, because I am not a guy very into the party or something, but my uh, perfect light is just buy a cup of coffee, sitting near the candle and see the sunset. That is what I imagine in my past time. So I got this life in Lancaster, actually. Yeah, no, it's a nice place for coffee. Um, yeah, excellent answers. Um, see, we've got a couple of questions coming through. Dan, I can see that you're you're already replying, but um, feel free to switch your mic on and um, and and uh, speak over the mic if it's easier. Yep, I can do that. So yeah, thank you for the question. So the question is, uh, yeah, what what do you think is the best location to live on campus or off campus? That's a very very contested question. Uh, I think it, it really does depend on who you ask. I think they they have different advantages and disadvantages. So the two main things to talk about really are a cost. I think that definitely comes into it. So generally town is probably slightly cheaper than living on campus. Um, the other thing about town is that if you're you can split up the day quite easily. So if you have, um, if you prefer sort of a nine to five schedule, as it were, so you go into campus for, you know, in normal times, certainly for your lecture, the seminar, and maybe a bit of library time. Um, and I don't know, perhaps going to the climbing wall in, on campus for a bit. Um, so you can do all that from nine till five. Um, and then you can head home and just sort of take a break from all the work and just have that sort of me time. Alternatively, I think people on campus are a bit more tempted to sort of blend it slightly more. So you might, um, I know I get into habits of doing this. I go go to a lecture, go ho go home to campus and have a bit of a nap, um, which and then sort of end up working in the evening. I prefer that personally, but obviously, you know, people have different preferences. Um, campus, you can t you can totally live on campus without having to leave campus ever. So you can get deliveries there, the shops there. Um, Personally, I definitely, even if you do stay on campus, I definitely recommend exploring the town um, and everything around it. As we've discussed, there's so much more, more to offer. Yeah, um, I think um, the only thing I'd add to that is that you've just got to kind of think what's best for you as well. If you do need that um, separation between work and um, and um, kind of time to relax, then, you know, you've, you've got to know how best you kind of like you handle that. Um, I lived on campus for my first third and my master's year. So I, I guess like Dan, I spent a lot of time there and um, it's very convenient. You're near the library. You know, if you are in the library to um, some ridiculous hour in the morning, uh, I'm not saying that I ever have, maybe, um, but you know, it means you don't have to get a bus back. It's very, very convenient. Um, the standard of accommodation that we have on campus is is excellent, superb. Can say that from my own experiences as well. Um, and graduate college is is nice and relaxed. It's nice and quiet, um, and uh, does feel that little bit separate from the the undergraduate parts of campus, but still not that separate that you don't feel part of the community really. Um, and graduate college on campus has um, plenty of you know support on offer too. Not that you wouldn't have that being in in the city centre itself, but I think ultimately it comes down to your preferences and, and what you're looking for. Um, and I think I think that's all the questions um for the moment joe can you see if i've missed any i don't think i have i don't think so i think we've um we've got them all but uh yeah if there's any more coming in there's like the last minute or so if people want to ask any i think um just uh, like one thing that popped into my head something that i really really love about lancaster and um and where it is in the country in relation to everyone else is how it is a a good um uh landing pad or jumping pad to do a little bit of exploring um you know i, I love manchester and I, I love liverpool and places like that um but when i was I originally came to Lancaster, you know, I, I really didn't, I didn't want to live in a big city, a really, really big city, um, but I didn't want to be far away from them either. And when everything goes back to normal, hopefully as soon as possible, um, you know, I, 
you, you, on a weekend, on a whim, you can decide to just go to Manchester or Liverpool or even Glasgow for the day, you know, and that freedom is is really great, um, you know, and just thinking by lunchtime I can be in this place or I can be in this place on like one train or, or one change. So um, it is very, very quick to get up and down the country. And technically, if you get up early enough, you can be in London for lunch as well. Um, so it doesn't take long to um, to go further afield. I can see we've got a question asking um, during the pandemic, how have transport facilities been? Um, if that's transport facilities in terms of to and from campus, um, the buses have still been running. Um, they've also been quieter than usual, but um, and I'm not in, not entirely sure that they've been running as frequent just because of less demand. Um, uh, Dan or Yongshuan, do you know if the buses have been reduced? Not that you've been on campus for a little while. <laughs> Well, in my observation, the bus still running in the pandemic, and I, it is very convenient to go to the sitting centre and any way you want to go. Yeah, and I, I forgot, uh, Yongshan, you're still on campus, aren't you? So yeah, um, yeah. So it sounds like they're still they're still um, regular if you need to get any supplies. Okay, we'll give it a little bit more time just to see if any more questions come through. No, thank you very much. Thank you for coming along. OK, I think what we'll do is we'll start wrapping everything up and if, if another question does come through, we'll we'll um, we'll, we'll answer it. Um, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, and um, again, please do come along to more of the sessions we've got planned this week, um, even if it is just to ask more questions and um, get some more information. Um, for those of you who, who um, you know are coming to Lancaster, um, you know, or, or are applying to come to Lancaster, I really do look forward to seeing you, um, uh, you know, on campus or in the city itself. It is a, a fantastic place to live. We wish you all the best with your with your studies. Um, uh, Joe, do you have anything you'd like to say um, before we before we wrap up? Oh, Joe, um, no, no, everything's good. Thank, just thank you very much, everyone, for coming along to our session. And uh, and do get in touch if you think of anything after the session. And uh, we'll we'll be here all week, but um, we'll also be here for you after the postgraduate week as well. Definitely. I've seen one question's come through. How long did you say the walk between campus and town is? It's about an hour um, to get to, to to get to campus going one way. Um, there is a cycle path as well. Um, you don't have to walk along the main road. Um, it's quite a nice walk too. Um, I'd highly recommend doing it. Um, uh, Dan, over to you. Is there anything that you would say just before we finish? Uh, no, thank you for joining us, everyone. And as we've all said, make the most of the area you're around. If, if you come to Lancaster, it is incredible. It's definitely, definitely one of the highlights. Great. And Yongchuan, is there anything we'd say uh, just before we finish? Oh, uh, I have nothing more to add, but I do really recommend everyone to come to Lancaster. Fantastic. I'll second that as well. OK, um, we're going to finish the session for this morning. Um, thanks for coming along. Um, just check that's not another question. <laughs> Can you please explain about the weather? <laughs> um, so um, I, I'll go straight in for that one. So uh, Lancaster being in, in the north of England, um, obviously um, in, in the winter months can be a bit cold and much like everywhere else. But Lancaster is is very much um, in the summer has very, very warm summers. Um, there is a stereotype which says that the north of England can be a little bit colder, a bit wetter. You know, sometimes that can be true, but I generally don't think that we have quite as much rain as everyone says we do. Um, uh, Dan lives in the Lake District, um, so he might get a little bit more. Um, but the weather in, in the summer, the spring, and even actually the autumn in Lancaster is 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 beautiful because of the colours on the trees. Um, so we do get the colder months, you know, around November, December, January. Um, but when it starts opening up into the summer, it is it is very very hot. So um, now I've said that, I'm looking forward to a warm summer. I hope I haven't just um, uh, jinxed that. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. Um, but if, if there aren't any more questions, which I don't, I don't think there are, um, we'll finish up. So uh, thank you, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you at our presentations uh, later this week.
Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.